Good evening. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker of this evening, Mr. Frank Islam, has recently been honored by UP government with UP Ratna Award. And a few days time, he will be in India, where he has been invited by Aligarh Muslim University to give their convocation address. And the university is going to name a part of the university as Frank and Debbie Islam School of Management. Mr. Frank Islam is an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, a civic leader, and a popular TV host in global television networks. In addition, he has special commitment to civics, such as Brookings Institution, Woodrow Wilson Center, U.S. Institute of Peace, National Democratic Institute, artistic causes such as Board of Kennedy Center, Board of Directors of Strathmore Center for the Arts, as well as highest educational involvement in the world, including George Hopkins University, George Mason University, American University, University of Maryland, University of Malaysia, University of Afghanistan. Presently, he heads Frank Islam Investment Group. He founded QSS with one individual and in this 2,000 people. He and his wife, Debbie Dreisman, have a foundation and over the years, they have donated millions of dollars in worthy causes all over the world. He has spoken on topics as well as given keynote speeches in many parts of this country. And it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you a friend, a colleague, and friend of Indian American community of NCIA, Mr. Frank Islam. Well, thank you, Dr. Barnack, for the fine introduction. I should have him everywhere for my introduction because he does a great job. Dr. Barnack inspires all of us to do well, but to do good. He's a source of constant strength to all of us. He also inspires all of us. Let's give, him a warm, let's give him a big sound of applause to Dr. Barnett. It is truly an honor to have been asked to deliver the keynote address on this Republic Day. So before I begin my remarks, I want to thank Giselle Aghani for inviting me to speak here. I would also like to express my deep gratitude to the leadership of the National Council of Asian American Association for your service to community and hosting the Republic Day event again. So has off to Gisela, Dr. Barnick, Binoy Thomas, Sunil Singh, and Pawan Baswada. Let's give them a big round of applause. So now distinguished guests, leaders of the Indian American community, ladies and gentlemen, let me extend my warmest Republic Day Greetings to all of you. It is wonderful to be here with you on this day that is so special to all of us and share this stage with the ambassador, with my dear friend Catherine Van Hollen, and many, many others. Let me state at the outset that I feel an awesome responsibility in addressing you today, and I hope that I am up to the challenge. That is so because on this Republic Day, we are paying tribute to our founder of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. And we're doing so in a very troubling and troubling times in the world. I do not think that it is an overstatement to say that we engage in the battles for the ideals 
that Mahatma Gandhi propagated and the future of civilized society. Without Mahatma Gandhi, there would be no Republic Day for India, and without his impact and influence on others, the United States and the world would be a far different place. As you know, Gandhi's teaching center on love, nonviolence, and peace. In 2016, radical extremists are currently Gandhi with the preaching of hate, violence, and war. If they are successful, a Republic Day in India and the places around the world that celebrate democracy will become a distant memory. In the tradition of Mahatma Gandhi, his followers who came before us, I believe that you and I, along with others who understand the value of free society, can prevent that apocalyptic vision. That is our responsibility as a concerned citizen. It is my responsibility. It is your responsibility. It is our responsibility as citizen with connection to two great nations and republics, India and the United States. In my opinion, there are three primary steps that we can take. Working in the collaboration with other people of goodwill and to fulfill their responsibility. And they are, remember Mahatma Gandhi. It strengthen the ties between the United States and America and India. And the third point is eliminate evil. Let me discuss each of these steps in return. Remember Mahatma Gandhi, yes indeed. We should remember him and what he accomplished, but more than that, we need to remember his advice and admonitions and commit to his Gandhian, Gandhian ideals. In these troubled times, we should ask ourselves, what would Mahatma Gandhi have done? What antidote would he offer to the present day chaos? In my opinion, the answer would be steadfast and resolute. It would be love, nonviolence, and peace. As Gandhi famously said, an eye for an eye only ends up making the whole world blind. That is a quote that we and, we and the world should be internalized. The Gandhian ideals are universal one. The man himself has said, I have nothing new to teach the world. Truth and nonviolence are old as the hills. All I have done is to try experiments in both on a vast scale as I could. The ideals and the philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi and its values is evident from the fact here in the United States. One of the greatest sons of America, Martin Luther King Jr., whose birthday we celebrated a few days ago, embraced them. Dr. Gandhi visit, Dr. King visited India in 1954 and studied the nonviolent movement and patterned the protest he led after those of Gandhi. He noted in a radio broadcast during that visit, if this age is to survive, it will must follow the way of love and nonviolence that Gandhi so bad, nobly illustrated in his life. President Obama highlighted the link between Gandhi and the king in his remarks during the Republic Day celebration in New Delhi last year when he said, when Dr. King came to India, he said that being here in Gandhi's land, reaffirmed from his conviction, that in the struggle for justice and human dignity, the most potent weapon of all is nonviolent resistance. And those two great souls are where we can gather here together today, Indians and Americans, equal and free. On a personal note, I was privileged to receive the Martin Luther King International Service Award last year. It was a humbling occasion for me especially because of the indelible connection between Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. King. Both King and Dr. Gandhi have been beacons to me in my personal life, in my charitable and philanthropic involvement. As an Indian American, I was proud to receive the award which honors the memory of one great man directly and another indirectly. That brings me to the point number two. It strengthen, broaden, and deepen the ties between India and the United States. The relations between the two largest democracies in the world are good and getting better. Last year, President Obama became the first U.S. president 
to be the chief guest at India's Republic Day celebration. As an American, an Indian American, it was a moment of great pride for all of us and a very special one for me personally. That is true because I was fortunate to be part of the U.S. delegation for that visit. Watching the Republic Day parade sitting not too very far from President Obama and Prime Minister Modi was a memory as an Indian American that I will carry with me forever. The President's presence in India for the Republic Day made parade was more than symbolic. It, sig it signified a reformation and renewal of a partnership between the United States and India, which are the cornerstones of democracy in the world. For me, it is not the system of government that India and the United States share, or the size of their population that matters. What matters are the common democratic values that bind them together and the potential economic and social synergy that can be realized by these two great democracies working together for the benefit of each other and to, for the world writ large. The Republic Day visit was, was now the President's first trip in India during the visit in 2010. President Obama explained very eloquently why the relationship between the two nations so crucial for the world peace and prosperity. Addressing a joint session of the Indian Parliament, the President said, we are two strong democracies whose constitution begin with the same revolutionary world. We, the people, we are two great republics dedicated to the liberty and justice and equality of all people. And we are two free market economies where people have the freedom to pursue ideas, innovation that can change the world. That is why I believe that India and America are indispensable partners in meeting the challenges of our time. India and the United States, indispensable partners to great republics in which people have the freedom to pursue ideas and innovation that can change the world. End of quotations, President Obama. Today, that freedom is being challenged by those who would create totalitarian states and totally eliminate the concepts of liberty, justice, and equality of all the people. That brings me to my third and final point, Eliminate the evil. As the world becomes increasingly more violent and extremists and tyrants escalate their acts of terrorism, the question becomes, can nonviolence still work in a violent world? In my opinion, the answer is yes. But peace must be forged first. The pen works wonders in a civilized society. It is a fragile instrument, however, to improve against terrorists and tyrants who accept no legal rules or social conventions and will use any means to destroy those whom they hate. This is why book, in my first book, Renewing the American Dream, in describing one of the necessary roles of the United States in the world, I wrote, having the ability to be a peacekeeper is essential to the future of the human race. As America's indispensable partner, India must have this ability as well. I say that not as a warmonger or a security psychophant. I say this as a realist and advocate for peace and justice and equality for all. I serve on the advisory board of U.S. Institute of Peace, as Dr. Barnick mentioned, an organization devoted to the nonviolent prevention and mitigation of deadly conflict around the globe. I would much prefer to see all dangerous differences and disputes resolved in a non-violent manner. The hard truth is this is absolutely impossible to do with those who would wage war on humanity and decency and are, are unwilling to negotiate anything. Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi are not gone. They live on through each person who's willing to pick up the baton of the non-violence and use it as an instrument for making peace. The passionate peacekeepers and peacemakers are unstoppable, unbeatable forces. United, they not only ensure the relevance of nonviolence, they make this world a safer, saner, and a fairer place. In closing, let me leave you with these thoughts. 
I believe if Mahatma Gandhi were alive today, the current state of things would break his heart. It would break his heart to see some practice brutal violence in the name of religion. It would break his heart to see some societies becoming less and less tolerant of minorities and so-called outsiders. It will break his heart to see some politicians and demagogue leader vilifying large sections of the people and spreading fear, fear and anxiety. While his heart might be broken, I know that his spirit would not. He would carry on. He would follow his creed. He would continue to be the change that the world wants to see in the world, and he would encourage and rally us to do the same. We're here to celebrate a day of birth of the Republic of India, but we're also here to bear witness and to reaffirm and renew our commitment to the Gandhian ideals of love, nonviolence, and peace. As means for achieving the full potential of India, a great nation, a democratic republic destined to become even greater and a force for good in the world. That is India's destiny. As an Indian American, who understand our civic responsibility, I'm confident we will do whatever we can to help her achieve that destiny in this year of 2016 and the years to come. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts with you on this Republic Day. I look forward to cooperating with you in making each Republic Day after this one better than the last. And thank you and God bless you all.